my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. After yesterday's news that IG-11 is back and is going to act as Grogu's personal mech, we have even more awesome details for The Mandalorian Season 3. Three set leaks emerged online last night and both Bespin Bulletin and Making Star Wars have chimed in with some really interesting information. They tease there is more to this story to come but the implications are huge for what Season 3 will entail. Notably, who Moff Gideon is working for and the Imperial Remnants cloning projects. So no more jibber jabber, let's get straight into it. Set photos from the third season of The Mandalorian hit the web and the most interesting of the three is what looks to be some Praetorian Guard helmets. They're not Mandalorian helmets. Now, while these do not look like the ones we saw in The Last Jedi, it's very possible they're the earlier design that evolved over time. It is also worth noting that it was previously revealed by Dave Filoni that The Mandalorian's next couple of seasons are going to show the origins of the First Order, something that's been strongly controversial but long hinted at, especially in the second season in Chapter 12 where we saw some botched cloning attempt that somewhat resembled Supreme Leader Snoke. I thought that chapter was incredible and we're going to see more of those cloning projects in Season 3. Now Making Star Wars added that they were told of filming in Long Beach, California this week and that at this location Din Djarin is going to face off against Praetorian Guards. They added that their sources told them that the Guards are going to rock the same weapons that we see in The Last Jedi and they're going to be standing alongside Red Stormtroopers with Mandalorian style helmets. This is a fight scene that they weren't going to reveal so soon but because these pictures are circulating they figured they'd give some early information while these pictures are fresh. Bespin Bulletin think that these images look more like Mandalorian inspired helmets but making Star Wars are pretty sure they've heard of Praetorian Guards. These guards appearing so early in the timeline is definitely a surprise to be sure. And it also leads one to wonder who or what these guards are protecting and it raises some questions. Are we going to see Supreme Leader Snoke? Could this be a Snoke predecessor? These are some thrilling questions and ones that we can't wait to learn answers to. But Bespin Bulletin can't help but wonder if these helmets are Mandalorian ones. But they say that this development adds some very interesting thoughts to things that they've seen being filmed as of late. Things they're not going to share in this article, but they state they're going to reveal shortly. Now that is what Bespin Bulletin say, but making Star Wars are firm and 100% sure that they believe this is related to the cloning story and maybe even Snoke himself. Now, if it is Snoke, I must say the canon is a bit muddy as to when he was born. We know it was sometime after 19 BBY, but an exact date is not known. He could very much be around during the time of the Mandalorian. Now, I understand that a lot of fans are not going to be happy about this, but let's be real, they're not retconning the sequels. And Jon Favreau even said that at some point, they have to connect the Mandalorian to them. Now, as we know, the creation of Snoke is part of Palpatine's contingency plan, which we now know began long before his death in Return of the Jedi. He's been planning this pretty much ever since his master Darth Plagueis planted the idea of immortality in his head long before The Phantom Menace. Now that we're in the years following Palpatine's first death, the remnants of the Empire are doing everything they can to quote, bring order back to the galaxy through cloning projects that will eventually bring Palpatine back as we see in The Rise of Skywalker. But that's not for many years, but it's why the Imperial Remnants needed blood with a high midichlorian count. And if we are gonna see Snoke in season three, is he the big bad that Gideon is working for? And just like Bespin Bulletin, making Star Wars finish by saying there's more on this later, but they just wanted to hit the topic before the weekend. But with all of that said guys, let me know your thoughts of this in the comments down below. So now my dear friends, we have some amazing details for Omega in The Bad Batch Season 2. The Kiner brothers who composed the music for The Clone Wars Rebels and The Bad Batch recently went on a charity live stream with Convoy Call and they revealed some really big details for The Bad Batch Season 2 while also teasing an upcoming animated project with a full orchestral soundtrack. Let's break down all the details and we're going to start with The Bad Batch Season 2. So they started by saying that Season 2 is going to be far more consequential than Season 1 the stakes are raised, it's going to be huge. And they've actually been working on the soundtrack for season two before season one started. They also confirmed something of a time gap between seasons one and two, which we kind of figured, but they state that Omega is going to be a little bit different. She's going to be older. And does this mean that she's finally going to get some armor or maybe even a change of hairstyle or something? But the implication was the character design is going to evolve, which I'm really excited for. They also mentioned that there are going to be some more important characters in season two. They also noted that there is going to be a scene on Coruscant. 
And the final detail that really stood out is there's going to be an episode that's going to be in the genre of political noir, a dark political piece. This is really ambiguous. I'm curious to see what they do. But knowing there's going to be somewhat of a time jump, especially if Omega's going to be older, then that means we're really moving away from the prequel era and going right to the heart of the Imperial One. Really exciting stuff, but the biggest news is the upcoming animation project, and a lot of fans have been piecing together other bits of information we've heard over the last months, specifically Matt Lanter, who teased he is going to voice Anakin in an upcoming animated project. Could it be this one? Speaking about the project on this carnival call, the Kiner brothers said, the following. You know, we're working on a new project. It's an animated project. It's a Star Wars project. And that's all we can say. It's really, really freaking great to the point where Lucasfilm and Disney are giving us full orchestra for every episode. It's a very special project. Some great, great people are involved and we're really privileged to be part of that one. And I probably said too much already. Well, instantly this blew up online. Could this be the mysterious upcoming Tales of the Jedi project? Or is it going to be another animated show based around the Clone Wars era or just afterwards? Another possibility is the Darth Maul animated show, the one that many leakers and scoopers talked about, but has still not been announced by Disney and Lucasfilm. It's the fact that there's a full orchestra, which means it's a very big deal. So I wonder what they have up their sleeves. And so finally, my dear friends, Kathleen Kennedy speaks about the original Obi-Wan Kenobi scripts, which were apparently too bleak. After years of anticipating a post-Revenge of the Sith Kenobi project, we're finally getting the Disney Plus series Obi-Wan Kenobi on May the 25th. But things could have been a lot worse for the plot of this show. During an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Lucasfilm boss Kathleen Kennedy revealed that the original scripts were scrapped because they were, quote, too bleak. In her own words, she said, we're looking ultimately to make a hopeful, uplifting story. It's tricky when you're starting with a character in that state that Obi-Wan would be in, coming off the events of Revenge of the Sith. That's a pretty bleak period of time. You can't just wave the magic wand with any writer and arrive at a story that necessarily reflects what you want to feel. They decided to halt production in favor of a rewrite. And bear in mind, this was originally going to be a movie. But after those rewrites, notably Obi-Wan being in a much darker place than originally intended, Ewan McGregor, Deborah Chow, and the whole team were very pleased with the outcome. And it's reported that one of the biggest things they included that really changed everything was the inclusion of the Inquisitors. I simply can't wait for this show. Six episodes of hopefully pure gold that are going to dial up the nostalgia and take us right back to 2005, just as it did for Ewan McGregor, as he stated also in this interview. Now, before I go, guys, I just want to share my excitement that Yaddle is back in this LEGO game. We had one frame with her in the original trailer, but in the most recent Warner Brothers Games video, we get an extra frame with her. In my opinion, she's the most underrated Jedi in the entire franchise. And I really hope her inclusion in this game means we do get an official minifigure of her afterwards. How excited are you guys? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and also share what you think of everything we spoke about in this news update. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up before you go. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, do all that good stuff and also check out my Patreon. The link is down there in the description. But until the next one guys, may the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, have a good one.